Today I'm going to talk you through what was the Kingdom of Two Sicilies and how it impacted both Sicily and Italy today. The Kingdom of the Two Sicilies was a kingdom in southern Italy, which is now Mezzogiorno, and the island of Sicily. So how did it start? Roger II, the Norman king, formed the Kingdom of Sicily in 1130 on the island of Sicily. At that time, the mainland in southern Italy was known as the Duchy of Apulia and Calabria and Malta. Roger II had his capital in Palermo, Sicily. To learn more about La Bella Sicilia, consider subscribing. The War of the Sicilian Vespers between 1282 and 1302 unseated Charles of Anjou, the Angevin king, French, from the island of Sicily, also known as Trinacria. The Angevins retained the Mezzogiorno region, southern Italy, on the mainland, which was at the time known as the King of Naples. The Aragon line, which was from Catalonia, were rulers of the island of Sicily at this time. Charles of Anjou would not accept defeat and retained a formal claim to the title of the Kingdom of Sicily. Thus, there were two separate kings with the Kingdom of Sicily. I suggest you get a drink now because this is where it gets really complicated. The Peace of Caltabellota in 1302 received the support of Pope Boniface the eighth and this ended the war of the Sicilian Vespers. Each king of the separate kingdoms of Sicily agreed to recognize the other territory. Alfonso V of Aragon who ruled the island of Sicily eventually conquered Naples in 1442 became king of both kingdoms of Sicily and ended this peculiar state of affairs. Upon Alfonso's death in 1458, the kingdom of two Sicilies was split again. John II of Aragon ruled the island of Sicily and his illegitimate son Ferdinand I was king of Naples in 1501, King Ferdinand II of Aragon, not to be confused with King Ferdinand I of Naples, I did tell you this was going to get complicated. King Ferdinand II of Aragon supported Louis XII of France to take Naples and Milan. This was a terrible deal. Frederick IV of Naples was usurped by the French. Furthermore, the French would soon press on to expel the Spanish from the mainland of Italy. After a disastrous defeat at the Battle of Garigliano in 1503, the French surrendered to the Spanish. Charles V the Holy Roman Emperor was the first King of Spain, Naples and Sicily in 1516. He agreed with Pope Clement VII to cede Malta and the island of Gozo in order to give a permanent base to the Crusading Knights of the Order of St John, also known as Knights Hospitaller, in 1530. The Treaty of Utrecht in 1713 passed Sicily to the House of Savoy. These were based in northern Italy. The Treaty of Rastatt in 1714 passed Naples to Emperor Charles VI of the Habsburg dynasty. The Treaty of The Hague agreed between Britain, France, Holland, Spain and Austria caused Naples and Sicily to be ceded to the House of Savoy 
in 1720. Still with me? So at this time, when the kingdom of two Sicilies is constantly changing hands, what were they? Well, the lands of the kingdom of the two Sicilies were largely used for agriculture. The cause for popular tension in the kingdom of the two Sicilies was that the property of the land was largely in the hands of a few well-connected families. This left the majority of the population, the workers, as poor, disenfranchised and dependent on often corrupt landlords for one, work and two, access to the land. As a result of the French Revolution in 1789, the power of the nobility and religion began to wane. Bandits roamed the countryside and there were numerous occupations of land by the poor. The Vienna Congress gave Austria the right to post troops in the kingdom of the two Sicilies. Austria, Russia and Prussia rejected any attempt at any form of reform. Joachim Murat, a political activist with a political group, the Carbonari, led an uprising in Calabria in 1814. They sought by violence, if necessary, a new constitution for the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. This uprising was brutally put down, but there remained a popular will for an independent Italy and to get rid of the Austrian rule. Political activists were targeted in this era. They met in secret and their groups were outlawed. For example, the Carbonari, who are suggested to have been linked to both the Freemasons and supported by Francis I of France. The Carbonari sought a new written constitution in 1820 by force if necessary. Neapolitan upstarts unwisely occupied the territory in Benevento and Ponte Corvo. Why were these important? Well, these were areas of land known as Papal States and belonged to the Vatican, the Pope. The, at the same time, the Holy Alliance, which consisted of Austria, Prussia and Russia, were anxious to strike back and retain the status quo in an era of revolution. King Ferdinand I initially granted the request for a new constitution, but was quick to use the occasion of an uprising in Palermo, Sicily, to impose a widespread clampdown. Backed by 50,000 Austrian troops, King Ferdinand I cancelled the recently passed constitution in 1821. All resistance was smashed and Naples was occupied by Austrian troops again. The principal Carbonari leaders at this point were either executed or exiled. Italians began to move to the Americas, the New World, if they could, from 1820. Pope Pius VII did not miss the opportunity to excommute the Carbonari as a Freemason secret society. Nonetheless, despite all this political repression, the countryside was largely lawless and covered by crime and corruption. Another coup failed in 1828. Ferdinand II tried to placate the population. He passed a political amnesty and did try to improve life for the general population. The economy slowly improved and taxes were reduced. Naples even enjoyed street lighting and a new railroad. In 1847, an uprising saw insurgents cross from mainland Italy into Sicily before they were stopped and the uprising quelled. 
a revolt in Palermo in 1848 again demanded a return to the revised constitution. By 1849, Ferdinand II, who had begun as a reformer, had fallen back to trying to retain power and put down any rebellion. King Ferdinand drafted in the Swiss Guard, yes, those from the Vatican today, to retain order in Naples, southern Italy, and in Messina. At this time, the British politician William Gladstone opposed the Bourbon rulers in 1850. He was appalled at the terrible conditions he found in southern Italy. Before 1849, Sicily had, had sought independence from Naples and wanted no part of a unified Italy. Rosalino Pillo and Francesco Crispi survived a failed plot in Sicily which was as ever brutally put down. Having defeated Austria in 1859 to unite most of northern Italy, Giuseppe Garibaldi agreed with Prime Minister Cavour to lead his 1,000 red shirts to the island of Sicily in 1860. This would be Risorgimento. A panicked King Francis II granted requests for a new constitution. However, it was too late. Naples was full of unrest. Politicians resigned and the army was beginning to collapse. Giuseppe Garibaldi landed at Marsala, Sicily and quickly took control of the island and gained popular support. He then crossed the Straits of Messina from Sicily to the Italian mainland and won the Battle of Volturno against the Neapolitan Royalists. Francis II retreated to the port of Gaeta, his last stronghold. Francis II surrendered and abdicated in 1861. Garibaldi went on to enter Naples to, to universal delight and formed a temporary administration. Garibaldi then met King Vittorio Emanuele II at Teano and passed to him the conquered kingdom of two Sicilies. The Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed in 1861. Unification was according to the wishes of the region of Piedmont in northern Italy. Unrest continued in Naples and Sicily. The Piedmont government struggled to either understand or rule the former Kingdom of Two Sicilies. Italian immigration to the Americas and the New World continued. 